Yeah. Yeah, Tried right. to shut us down because I was going to talk about Trump right off rip. Oh, jeez. Oh, no. <laughs> no, but... You heard, you heard Tenacious D is gone now, eh? Yo, what happened with that, man? Like, Yo, okay. Boy, yeah, that's what? a great subject to start with. Tenacious D. said some wild shit to JB. What happened? No, no. The, what, Jaws, you know the whole story? I think yeah. so. Uh, so basically, they were doing a show in Australia. Um, yeah. And it was Kyle's birthday. So not Jack yeah. Black, the yeah. other dude, the, the guitarist. Just yeah. if you don't know who Tenacious D is, it's uh, like a, a metal kind of comical, comical group. Uh, so as uh, Kyle gets his birthday cake, he blows out the candles and says, oh, did, uh, did you make a wish? And he said, no, uh, the assassin didn't uh, get him. You yeah. Know? And, and, you know, everyone in the crowd has a laugh. But because Australia, you know, Australia is OK with that kind of joke. Like the yeah. people at the crowd, people in the crowd have that joke, you know, they yeah. you know, have that laugh, but you know, exactly. it's really touchy when you're making a joke about a political figure. Um, and you know, you know, <laughs> Kathy Griffin paid with her career yeah, for that. Yeah, man, I, I'm sorry. Uh, and then, oh, like Kathy Griffin paid with her career for that. And also, that also well, happened. She, she uh, was fine, though. She ended up coming back and doing stuff. But, but I hear also, I was going to say that also happened uh, to a coworker of mine at uh, a game studio I was at where uh, in Quebec, our new premier almost had an assassination attempt at her, but they caught the guy outside of the venue. Oh, this was years ago. Oh, yeah. What's her name? Pauline. Pauline Maua. And um, an old coworker of mine wrote on his Facebook. This was before people really started locking down their Facebook and putting it private and stuff. Yeah. People you know could see. And that person wrote, "It's hard to find a good a good assassin. Uh, right. It's hard to find a good assassin these days. Right. You know, just a joke. But then, like clearly in real time, you're seeing the pitchforks come out. Right, right. You're seeing right. the lynch mob start. Right, right. I know right. where he works. I know somebody at where he works. I think we can get him fired. Da 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 da. Blah 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 blah. Yep. blah. And then, um, the original uh, cancel culture. I think within a day or two." you know the, the company had to make a statement and fire the guy and everything what and um yeah because you, you can't have that on your boy like, you, they on didn't your, know your yeah. thing you, you know, know what's wild so, though i mean i, I agree that you should you definitely 100 no, percent right. agree you can't call for the death of anybody no you can't joke about it but the thing that's funny is there's not the same energy for all the Republicans or mm. Republican musicians who have done this when Barack Obama was president or what now that Biden is there. So that's the thing that bothers or me when, a lot with um, this situation. What's, that What's Marjorie Taylor Greene saying that uh, I think there was a Muslim woman that was, you know, one of her coworkers, you know. Yeah, part of the crew. On, on her thing. Right. Uh, also asking, for, also calling for, uh, was it o- ORC? To get killed and all that. AOC. AOC, yeah. thank you. Yeah, and, and that's the thing. That, like The fact that so many of the Republicans make these comments and then nothing happens, but then uh, you're in Australia and you make a joke for the Australian public and I, I get, again, it's not a great joke, but the fact that Jack Black turned around and was just like, well, I never, and then bounced, separated himself, told dude we're canceling the rest of the tour, no more projects moving forward. I was well, like, wow, also- I did not well, expect you to drop him like that. Well, also his uh, Kyle's management group dropped him, right? And then also the Prime Minister of Australia uh, condemned condemned the joke, basically. Of course, which is fine. You're a politician. You don't think the joke's funny. I get it. You you like your your partner sta- an official statement kind of right. thing. You know your 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 creative partner doesn't think the joke's funny or doesn't want to be associated with it. He's gonna bounce out too. Okay. Your management company drops you. I, if I'm Kyle, I'm just like y'all. Y'all, this is way more intense than I thought it was being. I was making a bad joke. Uh, I feel, and hopefully he. I mean, he's apologized since, but I don't think he has the juice to come back from this, which is the unfortunate part for this guy. Like it's yeah, sucks he's like you- the the t- more talented one. He's the more skilled at the guitar one. Of- isn't right. that whole? Isn't that Tenacious D's whole thing? Like hey, man crude ass jokes to pretty bad mute like what what are you getting mad at jb crude jokes but i mean i'm with you skinny but it's never to like the guy said don't miss i mean like it's a crude it's a crude joke but it's not like uh you know an assassination attempt happened like 
Like if, <laughs> shit, if the, you know, the Japanese prime minister just got assassinated and they made a joke, you know what I mean? Like it's, it's a little weird. It's, I don't know. It's like Mans is using really a whole ass that, ear bandage for a little cut. My G, like he's the main, playing it. Main up. thing is that you already know, like yeah, he didn't die. Whenever anybody? Hold, hold on, quick, quick, quick mm. question: Is the idea that because someone took a shot at him, you can't make jokes about him? Because people made jokes about wanting Trump dead before that. So that's my thing. Because someone actually took a shot at him, those jokes are now off the table. Is that the I feel because someone realized and manifest that morning. <laughs> it's kind of like it's too close. It's All like, right. oh boy. It, you know, like like how what's his name? What's his name? Uh, what's his name? The guy that played Iago. Yeah, uh, Gilbert uh, Godfrey. Yeah, Gilbert yeah, Godfrey. Godfrey. He was going to do a 9-11 joke, like maybe. A month or two after, and then everyone right. was like, even all the comedians in that crowd were like, No, don't. Yeah, right. Millions Millions of don't people do died. it. I get you it. Know? An old man got his ear grazed. Don't get it. Yeah. I mean, former, I again former president. That's a it's a big for, for, for sure. <laughs> and, and 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 you and you already know, you already know no one's messing around with that. Like in I mean, in general, like when whenever stuff like that happens, everyone's kind of like all it's right, just we gotta it's interesting to me what we're okay and what we're not okay with. A, <laughs> go, a guy close. threw well, okay hold on, a guy, hold on well no josh let me finish because you've been okay. talking a guy throws two shoes at bush and we all made jokes about it immediately we don't know what was on the shoe we don't know what it could have done we don't know any other details people made jokes immediately no one lost their lives over it no one lost their jobs over it oh, oh you see, he threw that shoes a completely different country but go on <laughs> That, that it happened in a different country? Yeah, it happened is. in a different country. That guy but, probably got messed up. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Sure. But I'm just saying, uh, like, the comedians I'm talking about, that guy's probably dead. He probably got hung immediately. That's their. That's how they want to take care of people trying to assassinate a president. You do you over there. I don't agree with it, but what am I going to do? Try and take over your country like America does for every other country? No, mm -hmm. I'm not going to run that game. I'm just going to sit back, and you're going to take care of your business. But these guys do these things. Everyone makes jokes about it. No one gets canceled because it was okay because it's not a bullet, but it could have still harmed and possibly killed him. We have no clue what could happen. You have no idea when you throw a projectile at a person, what will happen. People have thrown snowballs at people and killed them because there was ice in it. There was something else in it. So this guy threw a shoe. We don't know what could have happened. We all make jokes about it. Donald Trump survives an assassination attempt. Someone makes a bad joke in Australia. I agree. People can, again, everyone is well within their rights to say, I don't agree with the joke. I don't want to manage him. I don't want to be associated with him. Uh, the president of another country that where the joke took place has the right to condemn it. Even if the audience laughed at it, the president has the right to say, I, as a representative of the people, do not condone this action. But are we going to say, because he made that joke, his whole life deserves to be ruined, even if he apologizes. Like, what's the line? Like, how does it work? What happens next for this for Kyle? I don't think that his whole life is ruined. I feel like in sense, like everyone always talks about cancel culture. I don't think it's really cancel culture. I just think you're just taking down a few brackets in the tax range. Okay. You can, you're not making that same you're making that arena money that you were making. You're not making that Paula Dean money. I'm everywhere with books and everything. Like you get taken down a bit. And I like your play there too, because Paula Dean had up. same. Paula Dean got herself dropped down herself. Same, so. same with Louis C.K. Working arenas, stuff happened, taken down the bracket. But he's still, he's still out there working on and won Grammys. Comedy, but he's not, he's not doing movies now though. That's the only yeah, thing. But he won, he won a Grammy after. Like that's to me, that's that's even crazier. You won a comedy. The votes you were win. in early, man. Before he got canceled, yes. the votes no, 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 were no. in. This Mail. happened after, after he got canceled. He won a Grammy. Louis I know, C. but I mean, K. like, like how, how long before? No, no. This is a way after he had oh, been okay. canceled. He did a, an album and and one. I'm gonna double check. I'm gonna. Uh, uh, Twenty twenty three. You know everybody else's album was trash. <laughs> yeah, he won. He won a Grammy award in 2023. Mm. Multiple years after he was accused of being a sexual predator mm. and then won a Grammy. And that's when people were just saying, OK, so then there is no such thing as cancel culture because you can sexual assault multiple people, turn around and the Grammy awards you 
a Grammy award because your album is the funniest. And uh, sure, maybe there are a lot less funny albums that year. So I guess sexually like, assault like our former president. Oh, okay, yeah. Word. Man, oh Word. shit, that's true. Trump Word. actually assaulted people. Ah, God, but that's crazy. Can't, can't make fun of him getting his ear grazed. Okay. Yeah, that's true. I mean, yeah, the, if, skinny. Mm -mm. I mean, we nope. are we, nope. uh, horrible. I again I don't want I don't <laughs> wish death on anybody, but I nope. think like Kyle the way people reacted to Kyle is really intense hmm. for what Kyle said as an off joke on a stage at a comedy show. Well, mm -hmm. I mean, that's how everybody is now anyway. I mean, yep. look at uh, yep. <laughs> which Chris Judd so Apatow yeah. said that Will Smith almost took Chris Rock's head off at the at the uh, at the awards. Right. And it's like it was a slap. It yeah. was it wasn't like a full on haymaker. Uh, or an axe going to his head, and, and so you know everyone kind of reacts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Over or what have you, but because I mean, they're soft, and then they move the goalposts when they get it called, got called out for it. That's but it. I also, but also, you know, it's also a very touchy thing. If you know, if he wasn't run, I don't know. It's, it's you know, if he wasn't That's run a, for president, would it, yeah, would he still you. be thing? Or because he's so Jaws, close to the polls, Josh just know, hits it's, it's the a, nail on the head. Very, you what just you hit the nail yeah. on the head, and the and the only reason I'm the reason I'm I'm in my stance because I saw it happen in front of me. I see, I saw. Okay, this, the you know the the, the person got caught. The, you're seeing the the swell of people live on right, this right, person's right, right. post. So it's just like, let know, me ask you something. You saw how Kathy Griffin just got. Let me ask you y'all something because I know there's a lot of people talking about staging, which I'm not going to entertain or not, yeah. but. What was the last time y'all saw shots ring out and people stay still? Okay, that yeah, I was I was listening to a podcast. Oh, go ahead, Jaws. How many Jump black people were in the crowd? <laughs> what? How, How many, many black, black people were in that crowd? Yo, none, dog. Okay, well, there. The answer. Okay, solved. <laughs> <laughs> easiest answer. It the, the was the most simplest answer. Usually, is usually the most Occam's right razor. Answer. Yeah, <laughs> there are no black I, people in that crowd. I I one of the things that I thought was the craziest was I saw the video where the people are below pointing at the guy before he even put the gun together. He got onto the roof. They said, "Hey, there's someone on the roof." Shut up! No, there isn't. <laughs> They're calling the police over, officer. There's someone on the roof. Multiple people are now pointing at him. He lies flat so he can't be seen. You can still see him because it's a one-story building. <laughs> so, like, so I'm, saying, I'm watching this. Snitched on the man. <laughs> I get right there. As they should. There he is. As they should. Called the police. Oh, oh, right there, officer. <laughs> they, you know they, when you're playing Hitman and they're like. Just go about the mission however you want. Just kill the target. That's what yeah. homie did. Like you know, you're supposed to be stealthy. Yeah, and yeah he didn't like, try stealth. <laughs> he went on the roof, visible on a one-story roof. Hey, bro, you 450, had a box. <laughs> 450 feet from the distance from the from Trump is lying lying flat. People are pointing at him, Clack. and the and and he's it, five minutes from what I understand. To put the gun together, wow. he shot off multiple eight shots. times. Eight shots. Eight shots. Eight Thank shots. you. Eight shots. Pe pe he killed yeah. somebody, right? Yeah, yeah, he did kill. He killed someone, and two people aren't critical, from what I understand. Oh, so you can shoot. Yeah. Well. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, every one thing. <laughs> Everyone thinks shooting is the most easiest thing in the world. You just oh, point and shoot. Not. No, no, you yeah. point out for it to land down. <laughs> there's, I understand. There's thing called gravity. There's thing called yeah. wind. I played there's... Sniper Elite. I know. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I'm just saying in general. Everyone thinks shooting is the most <laughs> no, easiest I, I, thing in the world. I mean, I, I want people practice. But yeah, you I don't. don't. You can't practice on moving targets. You're practicing on a standstill. Right. That's why you go to the basketball court and you shoot and you and you juke. And you shoot. Yeah, <laughs> I don't want to keep us that. on this much longer. So yeah, I, yeah. I just, <laughs> I don't. You know, I, I, uh, I don't believe in the American election system already. So I, it's, it's a mess over there. I think. Uh, I hope that people get informed. I hope that the next, after this election, America can find some semblance of unity because they are not unified in any which way or form on 
which is crazy because they're not unified unified on certain things. I've spoken to my friends who are Democrats. I've spoken to friends who are Republicans. I've spoken to friends who are Democrats who have spoken with their Republican friends and have found the the main things they all want is like tax the rich. I want to be able to get health care. Mm-hmm. I want to be able to feed my kids. Mm-hmm. I want to be able to get an education. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I, I want to know that my taxes are going to the right things. Because, right. you know, like th- some of them believe in the military. But when you're talking like billions and billions, like hundreds of billions of dollars being put into the military and into like giving money away to other countries, Israel, uh, and stuff like that. It, it like I, I so many people I know are just like, we just don't want that stuff happening, whether you're a Democrat or a Republican. And I hope that the people will unify on those fronts and will be like, okay, we need to figure out a party that will focus on that stuff more so than the things that are dividing. I would, I would hope they vote for, because I mean, it's still a two party system. Yeah. Uh, and maybe a sprinkling of independence right. uh, that, are, that are floating around. I hope they vote for, you know, whoever helps them more than just voting along their line that they've, that they normally vote along. You know, that's what I, yeah, I mean, I, I, I Not hope you're even. right, because uh, the like I heard someone ask, "What has, what did Trump do that people, someone would want to shoot and kill him?" And the other people were talking and were silent when that question was asked, as if they didn't like. And I was just like, "Well, first of all, mentally unhealthy people will try and kill someone because they're mentally unhealthy, not because." This person has a policy they disagree with. I don't think the person who shot at Trump did it because of policies. I think they did it because they are mentally unwell and they or they wanted to get famous, which is mentally unwell. Been famous for that long, anyways. Jaws, that to me is mentally unwell. If you are willing to kill someone to be famous, that's mentally unwell. The guy that shot John Lennon, the guy that shot uh, JFK, the guy that shot JFK actually tried to shoot somebody else before that. You know. Anyway, so you know, uh, and we are blessed to be in Canada, where that assassination attempts are few and far between, as far as I know. And I, yeah, I think the last one was. But it also tells you the character of the person, because let me just say the common denominator of both Pauline and this guy is motherfuckers hated them, mm. and they yeah. ran their mouth a little too much about certain things. Yeah, you're gonna get at your get, things are gonna happen if you're talking about black jobs. You know, a week before. Oh yeah, there's definitely going to be people. Let, Relax. Let, let, there are going to be people that are going to be angry at the things you're saying. It's just it's yeah. a mentally unhealthy, and I, I think 100%. that is that's the point. Like being mentally un- unwell when you hear someone say the wild, crazy thing, and you're wild, crazy, unwell, and mm-hmm. no one is helping you because your political system got rid of the the mental health Help. care system in yeah. the states is gone there there's even a, yeah, that was during reagan's era yeah exactly and and sh- uh, shout outs to the people who've read deadly class the entire comic deadly class is started from the fact that the main character's parents were killed by someone who got out of a mental hospital <laughs> and there was no system in place to help that person and they killed his parents and he ended up on the streets by himself and then the comic continues from there where he becomes an assassin and all this crazy stuff but it mm. starts with the recognition that the 80s were a mess and that losing mental health care really really messed up and led to some very unfortunate and dangerous things for people um yeah because the uh the rich need their uh their money you know and what's woo! what is what is tacky when it's a when it's uh when you're poor but you know up there when you're rich reagan was the last president i was also like a reality actor tv star yeah, yeah. yeah. Prior to, uh, so isn't that a funny common denominator actors that become it, president I mean, it's famous, previously famous. yeah previously famous folk well yeah. i mean you, you know actors previously famous we know what i mean yeah. but yeah with the clips <sighs> but again what's tacky oh, sorry. when you're when you're poor but you know, great when you're rich, getting money from the government, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, on that weird, an unfortunate note, let's move on to more uh, uh, fun, nerdy things. I don't know how you guys have been or what you've been up to, but we we did talk Comic Con last time. We didn't talk about it completely, but I, you know, I just wanted to say shout outs to the folks at Comic Con again. We had a great time. Uh, shout outs to Victoria Taylor of uh, oh uh, Veronica Taylor. My apologies. Uh, the voice of uh, Ash. 
from Pokemon the first eight seasons. We got to I got to meet her and interview her for the folks over at CityNet Mag. There's gonna be videos of that in the next couple weeks. I got to meet Melinda Clark. I got to meet the trailer park boys. They were hilarious. Are you um, just working? Or yeah, I did. A, I did do a lot of interviews with CityNet Magazine, which was a lot of fun. Um, you know, so all those videos are going to be up. I think the Trailer Park one is, uh, if, if not, I mentioned it last week, is already up, so people can check that one out. But Comic Con, uh, sixty-five thousand people came through. It, it was a, a big event again. Did you get uh, con sick after? No, I did not. I I thought I did on the Monday, and I had to take <laughs> the day off from work because I I was just like that. The things that I felt. When I had COVID in the past, I thought when I woke up that morning, I was just like, oh, no. And then it just turned out to be just actual exhaustion. Like mm. on crud. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. actually get like violent if I get a sore throat now. Like just having that like, <clears throat> and then you can't actually, yeah. th mm -mm, I don't <laughs> like it. So I avoid anything with large crowds where someone can sneeze in my direction. And yeah, I don't. But you did hit up, uh, didn't you go see Freddie Gibbs? So I hit up Freddie Gibbs. <laughs> but you see, hold on. Freddie Gibbs had thousands of people. No, 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 thousands a of there's, people. A, there's a trick. There's a trick to this. If get you, you know, you go to Freddie Gibbs, you know, things with, you know, an older crowd, you're pretty, you're usually pretty good. The chance is low. If you go to anything with family, with little kids and they just walk by you and, <laughs> and they just walk off. Hey, it's like, well, no, I'm but sick. like, he's not lying. The amount of people, Freddie Gibbs is open. It was raining. So there's already a gust of wind blowing away all the bacteria <laughs> from the, you know what I mean? I'm by the water station. So like, I have a good circumference around me where there's not everybody on my back right right you go in that closed area that is palais de congress and wendell's right there's a lot of mouth breeders out there that literally will just cough in open air and not think seventh about it not twice like not even third forget it they're like you look at them funny they're like what while their mouth is still open so no i'm not <laughs> i'm not trying to and then especially with kids now and how that just runs through and then like you you might you might kiss your daughter's hand and catch a whole fever off some daycare crazy yeah Bro, i'm not trying to you know what i mean i'm gonna go to my freddie gibbs and i'll deal with the the cops and and you know all the other the parents <laughs> leaving in a super big fuss because that's not what they imagined. I mean, I don't know what you thought you were. You heard Freddie? Yeah, Gibbs. yo, wait, who? Can we? Can complaining we complaining about Freddie? Gibbs? Not complaining. Leaving in a rush, like yeah, right. Why? Yo, Bro. Jaws. <laughs> this jazz festival, I feel, was the first year where people genuinely did not know what they were going to for a mm. lot of stuff. Freddie Gibbs, Killer Mike, and Andre 3000, all three shows. I've, I went to two out of those three shows. Mm. And people in those audiences had a reaction at most, like uh, Andre 3000. Yeah. Which you knew. I, now, Tell me people thought he was going to rap. Tell me. <laughs> okay. So, so, <laughs> people thought he was going to rap. 100%. Yeah. <laughs> and I, 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 will, I will say. How much did they pay for that? <laughs> I will well, why is he rap? Oh, I guess he's gonna rap through that little flute thing he had. I will say, even even though I knew he had done a flute album, I was hoping no in, a little bit in my soul. No, but y'all act like it's crazy that one of the best rappers in the world, you hope you would hope, at least admit you would hope. Don't tell nah, me you I know hope. I'm not gonna get God. No, I no, know. skinny. <laughs> yeah, whether or not you get God. There's a part of you that knows if this person is one of the best rappers in the world, he is one of the best rappers alive. If he, if he hadn't rapped in 10 years, bro, if he rapped more, like, you know what I mean? Like, if he, if he didn't just do the Every guest spot on Killer Mike's album, I would have been like, all right, yeah, cool. He's only doing features. That's yeah, not enough for a whole album. Features. Of course. And I, I, I didn't want a whole album. I didn't want him to rap a whole track. I just, just wanted 16. <laughs> Give me 16 <laughs> in between a song so I could be like, I heard Andre 3000 rap in my lifetime live. Like said, Give Instead, me this man <laughs> truly played the flute the entire time, which again, I know that's what I was expecting. That's what I paid for. Okay. But I, you know I had to have hope. Josh, but sorry. I was going to say, like, it's like going to a Lauren Hill concert and hoping she's going to appear on time. Or, or that she's going to uh, do miseducation properly. Or, um, <laughs> or like he he was saying in an interview, like, right, I'm an old man. I got nothing else new to give. Blah, blah, new, blah, blah. No, I do repeat I, the key word. What was the key word? I'm um, new. The, the amount of double time syllabus new. he was rapping. You think he remembers any of them shits? No, really? I think I like. I know they did. Um, I know they did a reunion for Coachella, right? Yeah, yes, Prince Coachella. was still alive. 
Right. And then Prince was like, hey, you need to like, you know, just take it easy. Like he was like all nervous because he hadn't performed live in so long. Right. So the first performance wasn't good. But then once he got the flow of it, everything like kind of worked. But um, I think if he had to do raps on his own, it would just be one half of the Love Below and Speaker Box. Yeah. But that's 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 some again some time ago. That was when Cat Williams was working with other rappers and not oh. just saying all, weird stuff about people being the Illuminati when he was on their album. No weird. Very... <laughs> Look at all the people that got got no, after Cat talked. Come on. Guys, I just wanted to hear him say, yeah. I know you like to thank yo. That's if he had done that, no. I would have been like, cool. I'm good. I heard Andre three stacks drop some rhymes on the stage. That's so how, many how, many how many people yeah, left? How many people oh, left? Yes. So I, I, I did I because I was pretty far up, I couldn't tell how many people were leaving behind. Mm. But there is a person who was in my row who showed up late, showed up 30 minutes late, <laughs> came in with like his pregnant wife and a group of people. They okay. sat in the middle because they 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 had good seats. After maybe 30 minutes, they got up and walked past me. I didn't hear the guy say this, but my partner did because the guy just leaned in and said something to me. But I was just like, Nick, get out of the way. I am watching Andre. Why are you talking? Like, yeah, I'm, I was, I'm watching one of the best rappers do something else completely different. Get out. Yeah. <laughs> but I, rap. I, Shut up. Because again, uh, exactly. Skinny. I was hoping the man would rap and any interruption is not allowed. So this man is talking. I ignore him. But my partner said, oh, the guy said, this is whack. And I was just like, oh, okay. Oh, and supposedly he, had to go to he the black dude to get like, hey, this is whack, huh? Yeah, yeah. Am, am I like, right? <laughs> older, older white guy leans over to me who could not care this less what wild. he had to. Physically, not possible for me to have cared less that about <laughs> anything this man had to do or say. Sir, you do not exist to me in this moment. You are only an object blocking my view of the potential moment where Andre might drop a verse. It reminds me of you goofs going to the Jake the Snake one man show thinking that or comedy show thinking that he was going to talk wrestling. <laughs> and that happened here, and a lot well, of people went. <laughs> uh, dude, it's the same thing when I went to the most deaf stand up thing. Yes, that was a, that's and, what I wanted to bring up. Yeah, and we all thought we were like, Well, most deaf is gonna at least do a couple songs, right? And was he, he did, was he most deaf or was he Don, yes, he Dante? No, no, he was most deaf. He even it was pitched as most deaf, it okay. was the whole idea that. Dave Chappelle, Yasin, Yasin, excuse me, Yasin Bay, excuse me. No, I, I'm calling him most deaf only because at the time, oh, Dude, but you're saying deaf. his name. I'm saying yeah. like, yeah, what, what right, was right. what was the billing as? Was it as most the billing deaf or was, was it most deaf? The okay, billing okay. was most. Deaf. I remember that comedy right. show. Oh gosh, yeah. he went. <laughs> and I and it was at the Phi Center. He went like he got there. Shout out Samirian Khan who was there with me, and shout out some mob goodness. So we get to the show, and we're like. Oh shit, you know, this is most definitely gonna be this is crazy. And then you get into the room, it's a standing room only. We're just like, okay. And and the room isn't as big as a concert space. It's it's kind of like a small space. But I'm like, all right, you know, it's 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 most definitely word. Yeah, word. man, right. like he's gonna do something. And this man proceeded to tell stories about how, you know, Chappelle tells him he's one of the funniest. They're always telling me I'm so funny. First of all, if you're a comedian, you should not be telling the audience your other funny friends to tell you <laughs> telling us you're funny. That That's is not a good way to other start. friends that are is, gassing you up. Dude, that was one of the worst things it, in my head. As soon as he started saying, as soon, as soon as he started saying, yo, Chappelle tells me I'm one of the funniest guys out there. I was just like, oh man, it's gonna suck. Like I immediately <laughs> thought to myself. You are hyping yourself up right now. So, from the beginning, Most Def is about to do stand-up comedy at the Phi Center in Montreal. I don't even know why he was in town. Maybe it was just for laughs at the time. It was Oceaga weekend, remember? I don't even remember. I honestly don't remember. He was on stage so, with Narcy. I remember that. Okay, cool. Yeah. So, he comes in. He's at the Phi Center. He's going to do stand-up. He starts doing the stand-up. He keeps talking about how everyone keeps telling him he's funny. He does like an hour and a half. Dude, it's getting to the point where... It, people's feet start hurting. Uh, and he, I, like so he wasn't uh, telling jokes. He's just saying stories. No, about he's telling jokes. He's, funny. he's telling jokes. Okay, but it's okay. not. But it's not like he's he's not doing stand up. He's doing story time the way Del Dave does. Oh, okay. Like he's essentially doing Dave style. Is he? Is he the only person that's sitting down? Yes. Rude. He's sitting on his. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> he's on the stage on a stool Rude. with his red mic, that classic red mic that he used to perform, but uh-huh. he's doing stand up. And all of us are standing and he's telling jokes and people are chuckling, but no one is really belly laughing. You're not right. Chappelle belly laughing. It's so, ho-ho, not ha-ha. right. And you're, and especially because one of the things that I've, if, if I've, I've watched the show Hacks, and in the show Hacks, the character that is the lead character, Gene Smart's character, becomes really famous again. She was always famous in the show, but she like blows up again. And she starts trying to do new more stand up, but every time she goes out on stage, people laugh when she just opens her mouth and oh, she starts to say, okay, okay. Yeah, so she's Chappelle like, thing, Eddie Murphy thing, right? People laugh at you because you're famous and not because you're actually telling a joke, right. they expect the funny, so they just give you the laugh. And she said she hated it, and that's how it felt watching most deaf. Some of it was funny, but most of it felt like I was watching someone who was getting laughs because they are one of the most famous rappers. Mm. And I was just like, well, this isn't really what I wanted out of this night. I really thought (laughs) I was going to get comedy. And then, Mm. you know, because I mean, not that not not to bring up Cosby, but Mm. the Cosby mysteries where most deaf played Dante, his sidekick. He was really good in that. And he was Mm. actually funny in it. So. I know he can be funny, mm-hmm. but I maybe maybe scripted comedy is a little yeah, bit different from yeah. doing yeah. stand up or telling jokes with your friends. Right, you know, it's a it's a different vibe. Like you know, For you sure. still gotta have that. Yeah, it's just because at least I know he has comedic timing. Mm-hmm. Like comedic timing yeah. is hard to teach someone. Yeah, so yeah. I know he has comedic timing. Mm-hmm. So I feel like if he could at least marry his comedic timing, his performance skills with good jokes, he would actually do well. And and also on top of that, it takes time to really know how to do it for yourself right so you can't just i mean you're gonna bomb you're gonna yeah. like eventually somebody some people bomb and da, da, da. like you gotta work at it work at it work. that's yeah. why eddie murphy doesn't do stand-up anymore he says right it's way easier for me to just to do a movie and boom it's done than to go on the road work on my craft make sure to, the jokes i tell in the east coast works on the west coast works in the midwest works in the south works you know, works at, like works in rooms where people wouldn't right. expect me to be good in that room. Like how, um, what's his name? Uh, Chris Rock does it. Yeah. Um, but I mean, I think it's all, all need, all needless to say, uh, Andre 3000 is in his old man bag. I know and we respect it for com- like, he's yes. committed, like he's committed to it. He's like, you know yeah. what, you know, maybe when I feel it, I'll rap on a track here and there, Right. but I'm about this flute. This food's cool. I like this. And- and, and the, the thing that made me feel even stupider is my dumb ass went to Killer Mike secretly hoping that Killer Mike was going to bring out Andre also. <laughs> <laughs> and the, the the best part was when I said to my friend, because I went with one of my friends and I told her, I'm like, yeah, so, you know, Andre was here a couple of days ago and Killer Mike and Andre worked together. I'm like, maybe Killer Mike will pull, bring out Andre for a second, you know, like, and then she's just like. No, boo boo. He was here four days ago. Andre 3000 is not in Montreal anymore. And I was like, <laughs> don't kill the dream. Don't kill the dream. So, you but know, didn't that also happened with Andre 2000. I think he did a, a show in Atlanta. And OK, a bunch of people came out and they thought he was going to rap, too. Yeah, and then he, he was a flute show. And then like a lot of people kind of left. Dude, he, he has been telling people forever. I am not going. Lied. I don't understand. Yeah. I know, dude. It really is <laughs> difficult. It is difficult for me because I know he has been truthful the entire time. <laughs> Andre three thousand has said, "Listen, I do not I like wish my... to rap. I play mm. the flute now. This is the performance you're going to get." And and idiots like me go to the show being like, "I'm here to support Andre. You play that flute." And hopefully you drop a verse. Like, I, <laughs> <laughs> and even in the, uh, you know, when you play the album backwards, you can hear him <laughs> rapping. <laughs> you hear yeah. him rapping, so maybe he might do some where he plays the flute backwards, and then Dude, lyrics like thought provoking, get my life together. Lyrics will drop out. <laughs> I know I'm an idiot. I know I'm an idiot. I I openly acknowledge I'm a fool for thinking that this was going to happen, but you know. Uh, I want to say real quick, what's up to Lee J? What's up to Mark? We I got to see Mark at Comic Con too, uh, and his family. It was great to see you there, and it's nice to see a family celebrating Comic Con together. Uh, you know, it, it's always fun because, like my mom, I I took my mom to Comic Con on the oh, Friday, yeah, which was she a lot of it. fun. Say what? 
She enjoyed it? Yeah, dude. She had a blast. It was, uh, I actually mic'd her while she was walking around the convention floor. So I have the re- audio recording of my mom and I walking the convention together. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and I didn't do it for content. I did it mostly for myself to just be like, this is just a fun memory <laughs> to have an audio of. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I... I, I Definitely, I'm going to listen back to that. But yeah, so shout outs to Mark. Shout outs to all the people that go go to cons with their families. Jaws, you were at TFCon. Uh, do, yep, this do, past weekend. Yeah. Get, get, do you ever see people coming like full family to TFCon? Because I know yeah, Comic Con has more things, but. Yeah, every once in a while. Uh, yeah, you'll definitely get a full family. You'll get like a a, a, a dad and their son or cool. a mom yeah. and their kids. And so, um, and it's. Again, like I've always mentioned before, usually with uh, properties like this, um, it's usually the parents, for the most part, uh, with the newer generation, it's the parents introducing it to their kids right? or the kids watching the movies. And the parents like, oh, well, if you like the movies, here's what I used to watch when I was a yeah. kid. Or um, like for us, it might be, oh, I watched Beast Wars and Beast Machines, but it says Transformers on it. Let me try to find what was going on before. Oh, right. that's so cool, you know? So it's a lot of that going on. Um, which is always pretty cool because, you know, um, as a parent, you know, you always want to kind of introduce the stuff you liked as a kid to your kids. And if you're lucky, they'll like it, too. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. If you're very, very lucky. They'll like it, too. And also you get a two for one with the toys or a three for one. You know, you get a puzzle, a, uh, a car and a robot. So right. if you're lucky. <laughs> That's so cool. Yeah, yeah. So, how, what was TFCon like this year? I mean, I, I but Proto Man has been telling me for years I have to come down, and yeah. I, I always, I'm always just like, yeah, man, I, I definitely want to, and uh, and especially because it's, it's in where, where was it? Uh, so it's it? in uh, Toronto and Mississauga, right. well, on, okay, Mississauga, Ontario, not Toronto proper, right? And um, so basically, it's three days. It's the Friday night ish. Like, there's okay. like the opening ceremony. There's the um the charity auction for make a wish foundation where fans um, and vendors and sponsors donate items that people uh, bid on and all the proceeds go to make a wish foundation. This is the same auction that one year had that crazy Unicron that everyone was obsessed with, right? The, uh, it was an arc. It was a customized uh, transformer arc. And it was in the shape of Dr. Eggman's robot, I think. Okay. And And then the guy that created it, like he cosplays as Eggman, so he has the big giant mustache, and yeah, then there's yeah. a video of him just like dumbfounded how much people are like pushing up the price, really yeah. bidding on it, really wanting to get it, and just really Wild. going, going, going. So, um, so it went really well. Uh, and uh, the Saturday is like the bigger day of the two, mm. where um, there's a lot of um, panels, Q and A's with voice act. Uh, some of the guests are voice actors, uh, artists. Uh, toy designers this year. Um, we had Stan Bush this okay. year. Stan Bush is the writer of The Touch and Dare. So the big theme songs from the Transformers animated movie. He also had a song in one of the newer Transformer Bay movies. Um, so he was there. He was, uh, it was really fun to see him there. Um, and also people that work on some of the comic books, Bud, Bud Bob, excuse me, Buddy Ansky, uh, the man that wrote all the tech specs and also is an artist. Uh, and Simon Furman, one of the writers for the G1 um, comic books, and also the UK uh, comic books was there as well. Uh, Aaron, <clears throat> Aaron Archer was there. Uh, he's, oh, yeah. <clears throat> he does the Toy Armado podcast with Aaron right. Archer. He's also a toy designer, a consultant, uh, and also very, really good artist. Um, like, uh, do I have my... No, my thing is all the way... Yeah, <laughs> my stuff is all this happens. Stuff. This happened last week. I bought these cool swords from Comic Con, and they were mm-hmm. in the basement, and I had to run to go get them. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> sorry. Uh, for voice actors, there was Gary Chalk, who played Optimus Primal in Beast Wars, cool, uh, as well as Optimus Prime in Transformers Armada, Energon, and Cybertron series. Uh, Ian James Corlett was there, who's the voice of Cheetor in Beast Wars and Beast Machines. He's also the first in a. Uh, English voice actor for Goku uh, for fun anim- fun animation dub for Dragon Ball Z. Okay. Uh, Terry McGovern was there, uh, one of the G1 voice actors for Wild Rider, Wind Charger, and Onslaught in Terry G1. Mag- Why does that name sound familiar? Well, he also it's- plays Launchpad McQuack in oh, uh, Darkwing Duck and I... in um, DuckTales. So cool. Okay. There. That's uh, wild. Also, 
Victor Caroli was there, and you might not know that name very well, but he no, is the narrator for Transfer- Transformer, uh, Transformers Generation 1 and okay. also the uh, movie, the animated movie. Oh, cool. So, okay. So that's why I'm wearing this pin over here that says, oops, Other side, yeah. it is the year two. It is the year 2005. That's dope. That's a nice. Pin. Uh, also, he did a lot. He did, a, I think, all of the Transformers G1 commercials. So any commercials oh, for cool. G1, that's basically his voice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He did G2 as well. And he also did the first Beast Wars uh, commercial, toy commercial. Okay. And then they kind of changed it up after that. Oh, yeah. Uh, other guests include Stan Bush, like I mentioned, uh, Bud Buddy Budiansky, who is a writer and uh, artist. Uh, I think he also created um, what was that Marvel character Sleepwalker? Oh, is that the right I, one? What does he? What does the character do? I do also have a question uh, after. Okay. Well, I guess I could ask it now. Did yeah, any, yeah. Were, people, were people talking about Void Rivals? that uh, Robert Kirkman comic that is transformer based over at sky skybound. Uh, no, I don't think okay. so. Okay. 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 Cause yeah, I, I know Sleep- sleepwalker. I'm right. Okay. Creators, Bud Budiansky and Brett Belvis. Yeah. Sleepwalker, uh, Marvel ca- character. He's like, he he's in your dreams or something like that. Like when this character goes to sleep and then this character, this superhero kind of comes out from the dream world. Cool. Yeah, he, he kind of looks a little bit like a green goblin. Yeah. Yeah. Or Hobgoblin, I should say. Hobgoblin, yeah. Uh, whoop. And, and like I said, Simon Furman, uh, uh, writer of the G1 comics and also the UK branch of uh, those comics. Aaron Archer, um, toy designer and artist uh, for since like Kenner days and stuff like that. Uh, artist Alex Milne, Al- Andrew Griffin, uh, Livio um, Ramondelli, and yeah, so those were all the guests that were there. So usually this Saturday, there's a lot of uh, um, Q&As, panels, uh, stuff like that. So um, I know Victor, this is like his second TFCon, his first one in Canada. So, okay. um, you know, he was just giving a lot of, um, you know, advice on, you know, when he, when he was coming up doing uh, voice acting and like, you know, um, you know, Sometimes you got to paint with your voice and stuff like mm-hmm. that. Uh, one of the highlights of the show is always the script reading. So what they do is they get all the voice actors together and then they cast the uh, script that is there written for the con uh, cool. with uh, um, with, with um, all the characters they play, with all the characters they play. And then also all the other characters that they don't play are casted by the fans that are in the audience. Oh, so cool. there's like, oh, cool. like a casting call. So right. people can come up to voice certain characters That's and awesome. then awesome. uh they and then the 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 voice actors vote on who with who they who they think is good and then those okay. people they all do a live script reading together wild and that was really cool and uh the writer uh Phil who's on staff he made sure to put a lot of you know little inside jokes for the fans right. that are in the audience so right. it almost feels like you know when you go to see Shakespeare in the park or Shakespeare and people yeah. that really know and understand Shakespeare are laughing at the right parts and stuff. Yeah. 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 So yeah. some people are like, I don't get that joke, but everybody else gets the joke. They know it's <laughs> like a commercial here. It's, it's a, it's a, it's a point in a show there. It's, it's a, it's a little dig at uh, Hasbro or, or Michael Bay over there <laughs> yeah, yeah. or um, That's awesome. Phil will purposely put words so that the voice actors have a hard time. The actual oh, voice actors have a hard time reading right. <laughs> Um Discombobulated. You know. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, Sunday, it's, uh, you know, more. Um, so you also get chances to, you know, buy stuff in the dealer room and the artist alley. Right. Uh, see the voice actors, talk to them, get seen, get things signed by them and all that kind of good stuff. So, How many people do you think come out to the event? Like, uh, like annually on average? Yeah, I don't need like a- on on this one. I would say maybe. I'm not sure. Yeah, maybe ten thousand. Yeah. I know when we start, when the day starts, it's always a big line. Of course. And then, yeah. like you know, that first wave goes in, and then you're waiting for the next, and then the next wave goes in, and then after right. twelve, and then everyone comes in, and then it's it kind of dissipates a little bit. It, it airs right, out right. a little bit, but it's a lot. It's a lot of people. I feel that I think maybe the U.S. ones we get a lot more people, but this sure. is like home base. Right. And, right. Um, people even make the drive up from the states and all over Canada to come out to this one because you know, um, at least. Of those people I've listed, the the two big, the two uh, 
voice actors that are named that I named first, they're from Canada. Oh, cool. Okay, yeah. okay. That's so, awesome. Because Beast Wars is a show made in Canada, so they have right. you know voice yeah. talent from Canada. Um, I think one of the highlights for me was uh there was a guy that's that goes to the to the con. Uh his name is Devin Christian Mack. Uh he's a voice actor that's based out of that area, and he's act he's currently active and everything. Okay. And he usually comes to the con and he checks out the, the voice actors and at their panels and stuff and asks really nice, really good questions. And like, he's also a fan. And like, I've seen him a few years where he's done the, um, the script reading and he's won, but like, Oh, cool. It's like, he was like, okay, I'm not going to do anymore. Cause I'm right, not, right, yeah, yeah. Working. I'm it's like when, uh, you know, like Luther Vandross doing karaoke, it's like, well, come on now. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, what's cool is that, um, He's also he was he's, he's also worked on Transformers Bot Bots, which is on Netflix. Okay, and apparently that whole production was done out of Toronto. So, oh. um, I think what's Beast the Wars girl style. that was in the big comfy couch and played? Yeah, yeah, Luna, Luna, and she played yeah. um the first Jubilee voice, first voice right. actress of Jubilee, right. Alice Court. Uh, I'll let her you name is. You could tell you tell us her. I'll look her up. Yeah, so I think she's the director on that as well for Bo Transformers Bot Bots. So she's a director, I think so. Oh wow, okay. Uh, so yeah, because yeah, she's, she's transitioned Court. from she's transitioned yeah. from acting into, uh, you know, like, you know, be, either being a, a voice director or here. Yeah, or, that's pretty cool. You know? Yeah. And so it was cool seeing uh, I call him out again, Devin Christian Mack. Uh, you know, he's his. Uh, I think he had told me the one of the more recent things he's doing is Sonic Prime, uh, on Netflix. He plays uh, Chaos Sonic. Okay. But he also does a lot of uh, Ninjago. He's also been on Total Drama Island reboot. Total Drama yeah. Island, yeah, reboot, and like a lot of a lot of stuff. So it was good to see him, and just like I, you know, I shout him out, like, "Hey, man, how you doing?" It's good to see you. Um, uh, and uh, yeah, it was a really fun time. Um, I always have, like, I think the fun part about it is like the social aspect of it. So right. like, you know, you either go to the bar or you hang out with people. Uh, you know, in the lobbies uh, after after the con is kind of done for today, there's a lot of parts parties. So like you go to someone's room, there's like a little board. And oh, there's, there's other activities like somebody I love does. Those. A, uh, I love those does, at cons. Somebody oh, what was it? Someone also does a the, the annual Slurpee run. So they'll get a bunch of people and they'll go to the closest, um, <laughs> I guess, 7-Eleven or convenience yeah. store and get Slurpees for everybody. So it's like a big procession of people going out and doing that. That's um, but yeah. It was pretty cool. It was really fun. Um, good I like the a lot community. Of I, seen in a while. I like the community element to TFCon. That's one thing mm -hmm. that I definitely appreciate about it. Whenever Proto Man has pitched it to me, I've gotten that sense of like, oh, it's not like because Comic Con's fun and Comic Con does have its own community aspect to it. Mm -hmm. The artist alley people and stuff like that. Yeah, but it's definitely because it's big and like it's hard to have a community sense with sixty five thousand people. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? But it it sounds cool that TFCon with ten thousand people can still feel more like a community gathering where everyone is in on the joke. Like you're saying, the fact the fact that Peter's writing jokes into the script to um, give it a sense. Phil, sorry, Phil. Phil, apologies. Yeah. The fact that Phil is writing jokes into the script to give it a sense of uh, that you know something that everyone's in on the joke. Mm -hmm. That's fun. Whereas I don't think you could do that at comic-con because it's so big yeah you wouldn't be able to do that with you know sixty-five thousand people i don't know how many people are going to go to the panels but if you have you know two thousand people in one of those panels i don't feel like you can still get that same sense of like small community gathering in such a large space but yeah mm -hmm. and then sometimes if you're lucky some other extra stuff like ha would happen like i remember a few years some years ago um gary chalk someone would give gary chalk a guitar and he'll just start playing guitar at the at the bar yeah. Just giving you like a hit you up with a live show, you know? That's awesome. Yeah, man. So people, once again, TFCon, I know you'll you'll tell us when it comes around next year because uh, mm -hmm. you've been going. I know Takuthon is coming up in August. August, yeah. Uh, the first weekend in August, if I'm not mistaken. I right? think so, yeah. Uh, I'm going to check Otakuthon 2024. That is happening from... Oh, man. I would expect it to show up right at the top when I look that up. But, the internet's uh, broken. Yeah, you know, back in the day, if I typed in <laughs> an event, the first and the year, the thing that came up was the date. But yeah, Otakuthon is going to be happening from August 2nd to the 4th 
at Palais des Congrès, which is the same venue that Montreal Comic Con is held at. Uh, so, you know, people could still hit that up. It, it, the tickets are still available. TFCon has passed, but it's going to be in Mississauga next year. And I'm sure it's going to be around the same weekend. Like, yeah. it's usually around the same time. The uh, Yeah, usually in July. Uh, the next uh, TFCon is in Baltimore in cool. the fall, in October. Okay. Dope. And then, of course, Montreal Comic Con is going to be in uh, July again next year, too. So if you guys are looking for geeky, fun things to do, conventions, I mean, just come to Montreal and hang out on the East Coast for the summer. Come to yeah. Comic Con, go to TF Con, go to a talk with Don. Like from July until mid August, Montreal, Toronto, Mississauga, that whole area, the whole East Coast, because we have such harsh winters, we go hard in the summer. Mm -hmm. Montreal is one of those places that if you can set yourself up for a summer visit, it's worth it to come here because one, it's cheaper than most of the other places in the area. Yeah. And two, we constantly have festival stuff. We have Francofolie, which is French music. We have Jazz Fest. We have Nuit d'Afrique. We have uh, French yeah, Carrie Mass. Carrie Mass, yes, yeah. which is a new name, right? They, they, yeah, yeah, Carrie Mass, new, which is uh, for which is uh, our carnival, which just got started back up again. And I think yeah, it happened around great. the same, like the it, end of July. Of, yeah. uh, what is it called? It was Comic Con oh weekend. Goodness. Huh? It was Comic Con weekend. It was a Saturday. No, no, no. Oh, sorry. It, it happened at the end of Jazz Fest. That was it. The same last weekend of Jazz Fest. Yeah, which was Comic Con weekend. That all that happened at the same time. Oh, I thought yeah. it was. I thought the last week of Jazz Fest was last week, or no, two no, weeks ago. I thought it was two weeks ago. Jazz Fest. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Jazz Fest ended on the sixth. I thought Comic Con was. Oh, yeah, okay. Comic Con no, was no, my fault. My fault. Yeah. My fault. I'm thinking last week was two weeks ago. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, that's it. Because you weren't here last week. Exactly. Yeah. My but bad. yeah, so so if you guys are looking like Comic-Con in Montreal, uh, Carrie Mass, uh, Jazz Festival, uh, Otakuthon, uh, Mississauga has TFCon, all those things happen in the like within uh, a, a quick drive away. Uh, you can experience a whole bunch of stuff on the East Coast. Um, I'm sure all the other places have their stuff. But guess what? California and the West Coast tend to have that kind of weather almost all year round so they don't i i doubt they go as hard as we do when it comes to summer because we really pack it in mm -hmm. plus if you're a fan of f1 which i i am not but I everyone am. i know who loves f1 yeah exactly <laughs> you shout out to my friend michelle uh there's a bunch of people i know who are big fans of uh f1 and you know we have one of the we have one of the races like yeah much all this so we, we gotta step our game up we gotta we got to put money into that infrastructure. Yes, yes, that is one thing we do have to do. F one is not impressed. Yeah, and I heard. I heard the, the, the energy was. Is it the yeah. track that's not as good? Like what? What happened? No, the to... the track is fine. It's just the facilities have been. It feels like they're in disarray. They're just not disarray, disrepair kind of thing, and they haven't oh. upgraded, updated. Um, because of the heavy rain, there's a lot of pooling and flooding in oh. that area. Um, okay. the, there was a lot of miscommunication between the F1 at the track and the police. So the police were turning people away from the track saying like, Oh, oh. the practice is over when the practice wasn't over oh. and people. Yeah. So it was a lot of bad miscommunication. Even one right. of the right, even one of the drivers, uh, George Russell from Mercedes almost got turned away from the track, from the police Insane. and almost got in trouble with the police because he was driving in some area, uh, that he was able to drive on. Yeah, uh, this Friday, Saturday, but then the Sunday, the police stopped him and got mad at him. And he's like, but I was driving here not too long ago. And we're like, yeah. oh, you're not allowed to. And he's like, but I'm one of the racers. We have a race going on right now. So <laughs> like, he almost got into a bit of a, a, a an issue with the Montreal. Oh, police, really? So, yeah, yeah dude, that's I mean, I don't I don't want to go into a tangent too long, but Montreal police are notorious for being overly aggressive when it comes to stuff like that they they're the type they truly are a police force that thinks uh, aggression is the way to subdue a situation as opposed to proper communication and that is something montreal the, you, the, the police in montreal and i i am more than happy to say this directly into the camera as i do sometimes when i really want to make a point the police in montreal need to be retrained if they think aggression is a way to get people and to disarm a situation it is not most of the time, it escalates things. It is a very poor manner of doing things. I've seen 20 police officers show up to address two homeless people on the street and then 
they create a wall now so that you can't see what they're doing to them and they're like pushing them up against the wall and stuff it, the 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 aggression in the Montreal police system is illogical and and just has no place to for being there um so hopefully stuff like that can be addressed because you know whoever's running for mayor next uh Valerie Plant who is the mayor of Montreal uh, from what i understand is not planning to run the next time and whoever else is going to run i would hope they take uh, on their platform one of the things is a little bit if not a lot of care with dealing with the police in in Montreal and how they deal with situations cuz you you can't have racers for F1 <laughs> being made to feel like criminals when they're trying to communicate with you hey i'm supposed to be in this i'm i'm a driver there's and there's no signs that say i'm not one i'm not supposed to drive here and i'm driving here because it's easy for me to get to the track right i'm a little bit you know and, and i think and i think the bigger issue too was people were getting in and out of the track with oh. like not at the checkpoints area like there was like people sneaking oh. in or some i think that was a big issue too right so it's just a lot of effort yeah so i could see why the f1's on that. and we've lost the race before no wasn't there a year where we didn't have it and it was in toronto or something no 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 i think that could oh. have been a covid year and then also if it was in toronto that's most likely cart that's a, a completely different it's not uh, okay indy indy car but there was one series. year where we didn't have F1, and I don't think it was because I remember there was a whole big thing. I'm gonna look it up. I know I'm yeah. not crazy, but, but I, I, I do know I do know when back in the day when IndyCar was was active in Canada, they yeah. would do uh they would, the way they would schedule it would be F1 one weekend, and then the following weekend, F1 weekend in Montreal. Following weekend is IndyCar in Toronto. Okay. And, uh, you know, we got to make sure we take care of Jacques uh, track Gilles Villeneuve because, right. you know, new F1 doesn't is is not they feel like we can go anywhere. We could we could plop down a track in any street in any city in, in especially in the States. The States have what, four races now? <laughs> oh, wow. Really? Uh, what is it? It's um... OK. So I found it uh, mm -hmm. supposedly in 2009. The Canadian Grand Prix Montreal was removed from the 2009 F1 season. Does it say why? Uh, I'm trying to get the art because it's an older article. Yeah. Uh, the Canadian Grand Prix in Montreal was removed from the 2009 F1 season. The International Automobile Federation announced on Tuesday. Next season will be the first year since 1987 that Canada has will not be hosting a Formula One race. With three races remaining in this year's 18 race schedule, the sports governing body released a calendar for 2009 removing the turkish grand prix uh to replace uh removing the turkish grand prix from august to june 7th to replace the montreal race the decision allows the teams a summer break between hungarian grand prix on july 26th and the european grand prix at valencia in spain on the 23rd uh organizers also added the inaugural abu dhabi grand prix as part of the schedule for Do november 2009 uh i'm trying to find it's believed the contractual problems about the uh Con contractual problems among officials for the circuit Gilles Villeneuve and commercial rights holds for F1 management contributed to the removal of Montreal. Uh, oh yeah, I remember. Understood. There was a whole thing about who owns the names for the track and stuff like that. Mm. Bernie yeah. and probably Bernie Eccleston was like, nope, we're moving. Screw you. <laughs> yeah, 2009. I know he owned it at the time. I'm double checking because I'm wondering if we ended up making concessions to get it back. Yeah, usually. Um, yeah, because I, I feel like no you would have known if they if they skipped Montreal completely. Yeah, well, I I remember. I think I vaguely remembered it was a year where like you know all the all the Montreal merchants like, oh my god, we're screwed for this year because this is when everybody makes their money basically. Right. When, yeah. When people really come to Montreal and spend money and and show up and show out and stuff like that. Yeah, they really skipped us. Australia, Malaysia, China, Bahrain, Spain, Monaco, Turkey, Great Britain, Germany, Hungary. Europe, which was in Valencia, Belgium, mm. Italy, Singapore, Japan, Brazil, and Abu Dhabi. Mm. So they skipped us in uh, 20, uh, 2009. 2009. Oh, wow. Crazy. Um, but yeah, you know, I, I would hate for us to lose it again because I do think that, I mean, I don't even like F1, but mm. I know, like you said, what it does for the city. Mm -hmm. um, and it's one of the older, well, not older tracks, but it's like, you know, they said since what, 1970 or 80? 1987 was the last time it wasn't held in Canada, yeah. uh, uh, other than 2009. 
I don't know if the track is that old. I can check how long how old the track is. Because I, I know the track was named something else. I'm pretty sure before it was named after uh, Gilles Villeneuve. Right. Um, but it's one of those. I think it's like one. It's an older track. Two. It's an actual race track that's right. meant to hold like F1. Right. Um, I As opposed to some cities close streets down. Right. Yeah, so some are street courses, basically. Okay. So they 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 wall off, block off parts right. of the street and stuff and stuff like that. And then you just got to track around it, and that's very different right. uh, compared to an actual track. Because on an actual track, you actually have runoff, and you have you can actually like you know kind of cheat a little bit and go off the track a little bit and stuff like that. Hmm. Um, and you can go. I'm pretty sure you can go way faster on those tracks. Um, and a lot of the times the race the the race drivers love like doing tracks because it's just like oh my goodness like you don't have to it's not weird looking or anything like that <laughs> um so oh. yeah and it, so mm -hmm. yeah the the real quick sorry the canadian yeah. grand prix was first held at the circuit uh in 1978 there you go and we're back for any of you who were watching this live we had some technical difficulties this is the second part. I'm jumping in real quick. We're pretty much just, I'm pretty much just doing this to end off the show. I wanted to talk about the Acolyte a little bit with Jaws, but unfortunately, you know, I, I couldn't get him back in. But just to give you guys a breakdown, when it comes to this show, the Acolyte, one of the things that makes it a little difficult for me is I really want to believe in the show. And ultimately, I genuinely didn't like how the story plays out. The last episode is used as a launching pad for so many more things that they want to do in the future. And I guess that is how you could do it. But I do like a story to feel like it has a proper arc and ending as opposed to much like how Game of Thrones, sometimes it, their seasons would end, you know, like the story would move at a certain pace and then they'd realize, oh, we have to kind of wrap up a lot of stuff before the season ends and then you get this sense of like y'all didn't plan this out properly you guys kind of realized that pacing wise you want to tell a certain story and it almost feels like the studio cut your episode order down and you had to rush and that's what this feels like it feels like i'm watching a show that had an episode order that was cut down because when you get to the last episode of the acolyte the fact that there are so many things touched on and so many seeds planted for the future that I feel if they had done throughout the season would have been better storytelling. And I, I don't want to spoil too much of it because the episode just came out. But I do want to say all the stuff with the Senate should have been in the show earlier. I get that they wanted to focus on May and Osha. So they didn't want to include the Senate stuff because that is very much a different story. But they did it a disservice. They they did us dirty. Because when you get to the end and you find out that the person who's in charge of Seoul and all this stuff is playing politics and you know trying to avoid the Senate jumping in and all these things, you kind of get this sense of, oh, this is a political show and not a... Well, I mean, Star Wars always had its politics. It's heavily political storytelling in some aspects. Especially the fact that like the bad guys run the Senate that oversees the Jedi. And now in this show, we're seeing it years and years and years before. So it's a completely different era. But the way they're doing it, where they're planting these seeds for us to be like, oh, that's what this is going to be. I, I didn't like it. I didn't like it. And I, you know, I had conversations with my friends where, you know, there's a lot of people out there complaining about the more diverse storytelling of star wars the more inclusive storytelling of star wars and i will not take that away from this show the cast is fantastic that's what, one thing i can say about the acolyte the cast fantastic the acting on point everyone played their role really well but the story just wasn't it for me and that's what i feel almost bothers me more because when you have that caliber of actor and this caliber of cast across these multiple episodes and you get to this ending, it's kind of like, mm, really? All these great people and this is what you did with it? You could have done so much more. It could have been better. And this is how you ended. I, it bothers me. It genuinely bothers me. 
because I really liked the first few episodes. I liked the energy. I liked the action. And then as I got to the middle and towards the end, I was like, oh, no, I'm getting annoyed. And watching this last episode, I was so pissed. I was watching this last episode annoyed at what I was watching. There were moments where I was just like, please just continue. Get, get Just get me to the end so I can say I watch the show and be done with it. And that's that to me is bad. I shouldn't want to just be like, oh, end the show. Like, just get me to the end so I can say I finished The Acolyte and I watched it. So, yeah, I don't know. Star Wars, I'm excited for you. I'm excited for what you're going to do. Uh, you know, the, the the there are things in this show that feel like they are bringing back Star Wars legend elements into their new canonical world that I think a lot of the fans who felt slighted by the removal of the canon for this new Disney universe, I feel like you will feel justified but I'm still not sure that this was great. I'm still not sure that this was the way they could have told this story. Jodie Turner as the witch, fantastic. I wanted more of her. Uh, Koi Mayer, Jason Mendoza, I think is his name, from A Good Place. Uh, Manny, the, is, if I'm not mistaken, is the actor's name. Incredible. Soul. Uh, like, every single actor does really well here. Daphne. Wolf, uh, X-23 Daphne, you know, like she's fantastic. It's just, but you get to the end and you're just like, it leaves me wanting more and better stories in the future from this universe. But I know that because they know where this has to go, it almost feels like they have to sprinkle a path to get to it as opposed to having freedom. Sometimes building in a universe and going this far back seems like a freedom because you're just like, Oh, we can go f really far back enough that we can almost do anything. But then you know that they have to plant again, plant seeds to get down the road. And when you're watching, it's just like, Oh, this they're going to do it this way. And it might not be good. Anyways, that's pretty much everything I wanted to add and end off the episode. I want to thank everyone for tuning in. Mark, Lee J, there's a bunch of other people. There's people on my IG who are watching. Um, so shout outs to them. Shout outs to my mom who was tuned in at one point. And uh, we'll be back with another one next week. And uh, keep checking out everything on geeksypha.com. You know, like we keep saying, we have our website. We would love for you guys to visit the website. You can watch you know, episodes on the website. We're also going to be starting back the uh, throwback episodes in the coming week. Uh, so it might not be this weekend, but it, we, we will announce. Also, one of the other things I wanted to say that's very important is we're going to be starting the show at 715 moving forward. So if you guys are watching this, we're going to be posting on our socials and let people know. But moving forward, the show is going to start at 715 and end at 830. So we want to thank you guys for supporting us as we continue. You know, like we love doing the show. It's just time-wise, there's unfortunately some elements that don't always work for the 90 minutes. So we want to tighten it up a little bit. So we're going to be starting a, a 15 minutes later, and it's going to be the crew, and we're really excited. So, you know, keep, keep tuning in. Keep supporting. We appreciate you guys, and uh, we'll be back with another one soon. So that's it. That's all. I think that's it. Yeah? Yeah. Peace, y'all.